Picking the right panel is critical for your project and things like location, building design, local codes and requirements, and look all factor in. Today we are taking a deep dive into the SMI 1 inch fastener flange panel and learning about its application, installation, and when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI one inch fastener flange standing seam profile. It's a standing seam snap lock system. And in this case, it's installed with hidden fasteners on the male leg and the female leg snaps on to engage the panel. You'll hear this profile type referred to by a variety of industry names like fastener flange, nail strip, and nail flange. Sheffield recommends a maximum 16 inch panel width and a minimum of 24 gauge steel to ensure the panel has enough strength and rigidity. This panel uses approximately four and one sixteenth inches of material to be formed. Just like other snap lock panels, the one inch fastener flange is a hydrokinetic system, which means it must shed water quickly to remain weather tight. To do that, it must be at a slope at or greater than a 312. An important note about this type of panel, it doesn't use clips. It uses fasteners installed directly into slots on the male leg, which pins the panel to the deck. This can be problematic because it greatly reduces the ability of the panel to expand and contract. And because of this, Sheffield Metals recommends this panel not be used in lengths longer than 25 feet. Also, as the panel expands and contracts, there's a possibility for the metal edges on the back side of the slots to wear a hole through the underlayment, so be aware of that. Always check your local building codes to make sure it meets the requirements of your area. Engineering is important because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best chance possible to perform. For the SMI one inch fastener flange, there's currently only a UL90 construction number available, which provides a blanket test that covers several different similar panels. And do know this is not the same as having specific testing performed in a laboratory for this particular profile, and it doesn't include other tests like water penetration and air infiltration to make it a complete engineered system. This panel is also rated for class four impact resistance through UL2218 and can be used in a class A fire rated assembly via UL 790 testing. For projects located in Texas, the panel holds a TDI approval when using steel over plywood. This panel qualifies for the standard SMI 40 year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. This panel is a good choice for residential projects with slopes at or above a 312 when you're looking for an economical system with a short rib. It's quick and easy to install and doesn't use clips, so it's one of the cheapest hidden fastener metal roofing systems out there and simple to do if it's a DIY project. Don't use this panel over open framing at slopes below a 312 if you have engineering requirements or if you have to run panels longer than 25 feet. Make sure you do your research and understand all the pros and cons to this panel before choosing it for your project. Next, let's look at how this goes down on a roof. Make sure to follow any installation guidelines or requirements available. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend at the eave and a one inch box at the top. But if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, there's a couple links in the description down below. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned down with a couple fasteners and uses fasteners installed into the slots on the male leg. Make sure the fasteners are installed in the middle of the slot to allow the most expansion and contraction possible you are relying on the head of the fastener to hold down the panel. So consider using a regular pancake head screw as opposed to an ultra low profile pancake head screw to give the most contact. When using a regular pancake head screw, you'll need to use the clip relief in your panel to ensure the fastener doesn't telegraph through. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave and snaps in place. It gets pinned as well and the process repeats across the roof. The tab I left on the female leg is optional and for aesthetics only. Uh, you don't need it, it doesn't affect performance at all, but sometimes it's a nice touch. Make sure to leave a gap at the eave to allow for expansion and contraction. 
The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. Details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com. If you have a new tech machinery roll forming machine and you run this profile, the inch and a half fastener flange uses the same male side rollers as the one inch fastener flange. If you want to add the inch and a half fastener flange to your machine, you only need to buy the female side rollers. Both the one inch and inch and a half fastener flange profiles are popular in the residential market due to their lower cost and ease of installation. If you want to know more about this panel or other panels that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel, and as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.